I was thinking of Eyes Wide Shut when I saw this uh, box. This is Erotica Minimal. What do you think? Very Eyes Wide Shut. Very uh, just bondage inspired. Not that the whole house is bondage inspired, but one of the fragrances, uh, Erotica Minimal, which we'll get to later in the video. This one is definitely in that direction, but I, I love the house. How do you feel about them? I think they've done some good work here and we're gonna talk about them. So if you wanna find out about New Notes fragrances, please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. I've got Joe here. Hello, everyone. So we have been doing a lot of house breakdown videos. If you are curious to watch them, please go search the channel for Joe. And there's a playlist of all the videos there. But today we're talking about New Notes fragrances. They're sold at So Avant Garde. And I have a discount code over at So Avant Garde. It's 20% off the fragrances. Uh, you can find out what the discount code is in the info box. But we've got 10 fragrances here. The latest fragrance is Erotica Minimal. But we're going to go through the fragrances in alphabetical order, starting with Caramello Vanilla. Here's what the bottles look like. Nice, compact, square, 50 ml bottles, extra de parfum fragrances. This is probably the most popular from this house. It's Dolce de Leche, Caramel, Vanilla Berries, Vanilla Flower, Musk, Tonka Beans, White Flowers, Cotton Candy, and Frangipani. Mm -hmm. So if you like a gourmand, a creamy, vanillic, sweet, powdery, a bit lactonic, creamy, you're going to really, really love this one. And I feel like, well, I don't, I know there's musk in here and it's creating a bit of a, what's the fragrance from Molten Brown? Milk musk. Mm. It's creating a bit of a vibe like that, but a lot sweeter, a lot more vanillic. So it's actually super, super delicious. It's very gourmand. Very and gourmand. Any any gourmand lover, this is right in your repertoire. If you get your nose on this, you're gonna love it. I saw I saw vanilla berries, and that threw me for a loop a little bit. I was a little confused by what vanilla berries are, but when they mention all these different forms of vanilla, dolce de leche, caramel, vanilla bee, or sorry, vanilla berries and vanilla, like it's very vanilla, and you really do pick up on that. There are little floral nuances which add to that creaminess which we're getting from the fragrance, the white flowers and the frangipani. But I, I really, really enjoy it. It's a super delicious gourmand, I yeah. think. So it does remind me of Molten Brown's Milk Musk. Musk Milk? Milk Musk. musk there's, milk. Another, there's another fragrance from um, a Parlay Mother Parfum called Milky Musk, I believe, and I get those two uh, m mixed up. But it also reminds me a little bit of Bianco Latte mm -hmm. from uh, Giardini di Toscana. But this one doesn't seem as powdery as... Uh, Giardini dos Toscana's uh, Bianco Latte. But this is actually one of the best from this house, I think. And I actually love to layer it with another fragrance that uh, New Notes has, and I'm going to tell you about it. I think yeah. you were telling me about it too, but we didn't tell each other about the layering combo. And we both picked we, up on it. We kind of figured it out on its own. <laughs> it's, it's, it's there when you actually have them on skin and you have them next to each other, you can totally smell it. And it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, yeah. yeah. So yeah, this is Caramello Vanilla. Super, super delicious gourmand. Very milky, caramelly, and vanilla. Delicious. All right, next up we've got Cocktail Maracuja. This one's in an orange bottle. So interesting thing happened with this one. I wore it three times. I didn't get any of the fruits the first and second time. For me, the first and second time I wore it, it was mostly something like Baccarat Rouge in that molecular style Ambroxan. Finally, in the third time I was wearing it, the fruits came out and it became uber fruity cocktail mm. with the maracuja. But cocktail maracuja has notes of uh, white musk, ginger, amber, patchouli, cardamom, cedarwood, lactonic notes, pear, passion fruit, lemon, strawberries, black currant, cinnamon, pink pepper, jasmine, and rose. A lot of notes. If you notice with this house, there's a lot of notes. And I think there's a reason for that because the brand is called New Notes. Mm -hmm. So they do really let you know all the notes yeah. in here. So what do you think about this one? Well, you mentioned it yourself. There's a lot of notes. It's a, it's a cocktail. It's a fruit cocktail. The first time I sprayed this on, uh, contrary to Sebastian's experience with it, I was getting fruits off the bat. But um, I enjoy it. I get a bit of a... I almost get a bit of a stone fruity vibe, even though there isn't note of any osmanthus or anything... Stone fruit-like. Stone fruit-like. I, I get a bit of a stone fruitiness from it. And I'm assuming that's just an amalgamation of all the other fruits that they have in here. Um, I like it, though. I, I think it's good. It threw me a little bit with the lactonicness. Um, 
that didn't necessarily mesh too well with my nose. However, if you're a fan of fruity fragrances and you're looking for an actual fruity cocktail to wear, this is this could be the one for you. Yeah. For me, I still get that kind of ambroxan thing, and I think it's basically covering the fruits up for some reason, and it's pretty potent. My nose had to get used to, you know, recognizing the fruits for some reason. But for me, this is uber passion fruity. Mm -hmm. That's what really stands out as far as the fruits goes. And then there's, of course, blackcurrant and strawberries as well. Now, the thing with the lactonic notes in here, it doesn't really smell milky for me. It just adds a smoothness. So I guess we're smelling some things differently. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, and that's what we get with this one. I'm not getting a milkiness. I'm just getting something smooth and creamy, which blends really perfectly with the fruits that are in here. And all those kind of molecular ambroxan-like notes, I don't know where they're coming from, but for me, it's just drowning in it. So I see what you're saying, though. I do get a bit of that molecular kind of ambroxany experience from it but the fruits for me just are very overpowering i, really? I, just, I just get fruit fruit yeah yeah <laughs> it's overdosed with fruits i, I guess a whole lot of fruits from it okay mm -hmm. well it's called cocktail maracuja for a reason <laughs> <laughs> so the newest fragrance in the line is called erotica minimal as we showed you the box earlier it is a bit bdsm and for me the box reminds me of eyes wide shut mm -hmm. that 90s film with uh, nicole kidman and tom cruise have you guys seen that film by the way <laughs> Drop it in the comments. <laughs> so Erotica Minimal has notes of coriander, musk, geranium, patchouli, amber, rose, vanilla, iris, jasmine, and cinnamon. I was actually expecting something very animalic with this one. I didn't get animalic. It did become musky, but not, not the animalic kind. But I quite like this one from the collection, and I enjoy it. What do you think? This is another one that I enjoy. I do get musk off the top, and I, the musk comes out more as it dries down, as musks typically do. However, like Sebastian was saying, when you think of kind of a, a BDSM, kind of like a Marquis de Sade fragrance, if you will, I mean, there's fragrances that are made in a similar vein to Marquis de Sade, like pretty much like homage to him. And it wasn't really giving that off of uh, my first impression. I think it's just a really good aromatic fragrance with some iris, a little bit of sweetness from vanilla, just kind of like round it out a little bit. And... It's not that it's not very divisive, which usually you would think a BDSM inspired fragrance would be more divisive. But this one, I feel like this would be a pretty easy wear. Yeah, I think they played it safe with this one. It, there's definitely something creamy vanilla under there. Up top, the musk comes through and I wanted a little more muskiness from it, a little more sexiness, although it's pretty sexy to me. I find yeah. it to be very sexy uh, 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 to wear, but uh, I just wanted a little more something animalic, but that's not what we got. But doesn't mean it's not a good it's not a bad fragrance it's enjoyable to wear i think yeah that patchouli is also a nice contrast with the geranium because the geranium's adding a bit of that like fresh mintiness that kind of cleans out your nostrils and then the patchouli is that earthiness grounding darkness i get that from this as well yeah i don't know if you do <laughs> the, the, the cool thing about these fragrances is what we've known i mentioned earlier we talked about caramello vanilla and we have a fragrance that you know blends really well with it for me also, Erotica Minimal blends really well with Talco. I feel mm. like since they're all created by the same perfumer, they're using a somewhat of a similar DNA and you can go from one to the other and, and create a new original fragrances. And since this is powdery, layering it with Talco, which we're gonna get to at the very last fragrance, and yeah. since we're doing this in alphabetical order, you'll intensify the powderiness and add that kind of baby powdery touch yeah. to something like Erotica Minimal, mm -hmm. make something. But I think it also can be layered with their musk fragrance as well to bring out the muskiness from it. So it's a really fun house in that way, I yeah. think. You can, they're like little building blocks almost. You can just play around with them. Yeah, you can play mixology with the uh, yeah. fragrances. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so there are three different fragrances with different colored bottles and the rest of the collection is black bottles. But we've got Latte de Cherry right here. The Cherry, and this is in red, obviously. And cherries have become very trendy. Yeah. Everybody seems to be making a cherry fragrance. Are you guys fans of cherry fragrances? <laughs> Are you a fan? I, uh, they're hit or miss. Hit or miss? Yeah. So this one features notes of cherries, red berries, almonds, tonka beans, vanilla, hot spices, sandalwood, musk, amber, vetiver, jasmine, sweet orange, ilong ilong, and Turkish rose. A lot of stuff going on, and I, I do give them credit for revealing all the notes. Yeah. And there's brands that just say top note, one note, heart note, one note, bass note, one note. It's like, 
What is that all about? So frustrating to me. It's like, come on. So this one, to me, smells like a cherry hard candy with a little bit of booziness and, you know, additional fruitiness mm -hmm. in the background. And, of course, you're going to get the almonds and tonka beans, which, which has become signature since Tom Ford launched his uh, Lost Cherry and they featured the almonds and tonka beans against the cherries as well. Yeah, and this one, I I don't get lost cherry from it, even though the note breakdown with the cherries, almond, and tonka, they all kind of go in a similar direction towards lost cherry. It is its own fragrance, and it's not by any means the same as lost cherry. I think the cherry in this is a lot different than the cherry that they use in Tom Ford. This I one, agree. This one's a little bit more photorealistic, whereas the cherry in Tom Ford fragrances, for me, always seemed a bit more synthetic. That's just my nose. Um, but I I enjoy this one. I think the Ilang Ilang, it comes out as well. And the rose kind of buffers that redness to the fragrance, you know? It kind of adds to the whole idea that, I mean, red bottle, red notes, red berries, cherries, all that <laughs> stuff. It's a, it's a good gourmand. And I don't necessarily get too much of the, the latte, like the, the milkiness. It doesn't come out too much for me. But, uh, I think they're just, I think it's basically just named Latte de Cherry. There's no, yeah. there's no milky notes mentioned here. No. Um, I, you know, I like this one. It's fun and playful. Whenever I see a cherry fragrance, I don't take them seriously for some reason. I feel that. And the only time I really like to wear cherry fragrances is if I'm in a fun and playful mood. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes if I'm not and I want to be in that mood, I would spritz something like this. But they're, I don't consider them like serious fragrances when I'm in the serious fragrance wearing mood. I I agree with that. Honestly, it's kind of the it's kind of a similar vein to me with a uh, a lot of just like fruity notes and like fruity florals like for me it's always it goes in a little bit more of a playful direction like Sebastian was saying and if you want to be taken seriously, maybe you could wear it. <laughs> if you want to be taken seriously, do not wear cherry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, may, maybe maybe you could. <laughs> but uh for the most part, it's definitely going to be more of a a playful, mischievous fragrance. Do you also think that cherry as a note is a bit girly? A little bit. A little bit. It's a little bit feminine. Do you have a problem with that? I don't have a problem with it necessarily, but um, I think you can make cherry masculine. Uh, I mean, quoting Tom Ford again, or going back to Tom Ford again, I think cherry smoke was definitely a bit more of like a masculine take on cherry as opposed to electric and lost cherry, mm -hmm. which go a bit more feminine. Um, okay. But yeah, I think you could definitely make it more masculine. This one... Kind of sits in the middle for me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a decent release. I wanted a little something more with this one. For me, they give us a gourmand. Like 1015, ha uh, room 1015 mm -hmm. has a cherry, a cherry punk. Cherry punk, cherry yeah. punk. And their cherry punk has that leather. It dries down to a leather. It's a bit of a rubbery leather. I like that about that one. And then, of course, the, the extrait of that is also really, really great. Yeah. Here, I wanted something like that as well. And it basically just stays a, a, a kind of a gourmand cherry fragrance which stays playful yeah yeah anyway latte to cherry if that's your speed go for it <laughs> <laughs> the next fragrance we're talking about is musk complexity and if you have been following my channel you know i enjoy my musks and i'm going to tell you right now this is my favorite fragrance in the collection <laughs> are you a fan of musks too i love musks yeah yeah animalic to clean any kind of musk really i i usually take a liking to okay yeah where, where where did you learn to like musks? Uh, it was from a it was from an aftershave I owned a very very long time ago. Um, it was a Pinal aftershave and it was oh. a, it was a musk one. Okay. And from that, I think that was like my intro to musks and kind of just got me into it. But now, whenever I smell musk, it's just like I love it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This one's really fun. It has notes of cinnamon peel, lemons, spicy ginger, demerara sugar, rum accord, bergamot, pettigran, red fruits, guyac wood, musk, muscanone. Exaltone, Fixalide, Civitone, Sandalwood, Patchouli, Chocolate Flower, Jasmine, Labdanum, Cardamom. So I've got my cheat sheet here with the notes that I mentioned. Muscanone, Exaltone, Fixalide, and Civitone. So Muscanone is a Ferminish note. Odor description, Musk Animalic, a very elegant Nitro Musk type of odor. Reminiscent of Musk Ketone with a slight animal but natural undertone. Usage, Muscanone is a very powerful musk with two facets. At low dosages, it is a fragrance enhancer. Above this level, it is used for its musky character in addition to its boosting effect. It has excellent substantivity on fabric, hair, and skin, imparting a musky, powdery, cosmetic softness. 
So that is muscanone. We've got exaltone also from Fermaniche. The odor description, musk, sweet, animalic, powdery, powerful, musky odor. Very similar to that of muscone. And in the opinion of many perfumers superior in type and beauty, it ranks among the finest and most efficient fixatives known in like cyclopentadecanolide. <laughs> That's a mouthful. That is a, quite a word. <laughs> <laughs> it improves the wearability of a perfume when properly incorporated in the fragrance. Its power becomes more perceptible and evident in extreme dilution, e.g. below 1% in the perfume oil. So we also have fixalide, synonym Musk tetralin tonalid, odor description, strong, powdery, sweet, slightly fruity. I wasn't able to find which firm that came from. And then finally, civetone, which is a synthetic civet node from Fermaniche. Musk animalic, odor description, warm, sensuous, animalic, and musky. So these were all used in this uh, fragrance. And I think they've used a nice balance of it. Yeah. And with uh, this musk complexity being my favorite, um, you know, there's a faint reminder of musk ravageur mm -hmm. but it's very citrusy don't you think yeah no i agree that it's uh off the top you definitely do get those lemons and uh get a bit of a zing from that ginger for sure yeah but the sweetness is definitely there as well and i really this is the fragrance that we kind of foreshadowed that earlier on with uh if you mix carmelo vanilla along with musk complexity those two together musk ravageur yeah. And if anything, maybe even more of like a, a deep, boomier version of Musk Ravageur. Totally. Um, with even more facets. Um, but I really, really enjoy really Musk love. Complexity. Really love. I think it's great. It doesn't go too animalic. It doesn't go too citrusy. And it's a really good middle ground between the two. And I also enjoy that they put Demerara sugar because I use that in my tea sometimes. You do? Yeah, I do. I put, okay. I put some raw Demerara sugar in my tea and it adds like a bit of a i think it's a bit of like a, a darker sweetness like a burnt sweetness almost but okay. i think it's great i'm gonna have to try demerara sugar real tasty yeah all right sure, all right. i love tea sugar in the raw turbinado all that stuff yeah oh, okay <laughs> no but this must must complexity is super super amazing as soon as i smelled the collection i knew must complexity was my favorite just a really great musk and really always good. love finding a new musk mm -hmm. and i haven't experienced a musk like this with a lot of citruses so the lemons really do stand out and as uh, joe was mentioning the spicy ginger you do notice it and you also notice the cinnamon and that cinnamon was also prominent and present in musk rabageur so layering with caramello vanilla oh my god you have a very delicious musk fragrance here no that's amazing also uh if i do if i may add um the citruses allows this to be an all year round wear yeah which is totally. really really cool because some musks when they're they're very dense and very deep sometimes it's better for like fall winter again wear what you want when you want but this one with that citrus note or the citrus notes in there it allows it's more accessible for all year round usage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mentioned the civetone. Civetone is that synthetic civet note. If you guys don't know anything about civet, you can search a channel. I think they've got the right amount in here. It's not animalic or fecal or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's just the right amount, don't you think? Yeah, that's just that good amount of funk that everyone everyone loves. Yeah, where from... It's, where, where it's not too funky. No, it's not too funky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> really so, lovely, though. Yeah, this is a good one. Yeah. Next up, we've got New Leather. This one right here. And New Leather, to me, is a leather fragrance, obviously. Mm -hmm. The name is right there. Suede Accord, Saffron Flower, Nutmeg, Warm Woods, Cinnamon, Gurgen Balsam, Cipriol, Vetiver, Patchouli, Iris, Cardamom, Labanum, Rosewood, Pink Pepper, Bergamot. Yeah, they don't, they're not shy from, you know, giving you the... They, sh they show everything. <laughs> they're, just, they're very transparent. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. Sometimes yeah. it'd be, maybe it might be too much for some people who don't understand certain notes, but mm -hmm. for me... I want to know what goes into making fragrances and I want the details. I'm a detail guy. No, as am I. And it, it helps when you're smelling it to actually articulate the different things that are going on. Yeah. It's good to have that little uh, blueprint to work off of. So this is a nice suede leather. It's got suede accord and it's got that saffron flower. Saffron to me is always very leathery. It's a spice that comes off leathery. So if you've ever bought saffron from an establishment that knows about saffron just open up the jar and smell it because i recently brought back saffron from dubai where they were selling tons of saffron as soon as i open up the jar the saffron smells like leather probably amazing yeah, yeah. it's so amazing <laughs> and here it smells like saffron leather it's a just a really great 
balance of suede accord, which is the suede leather and the leatheriness you get from saffron and all the other spices that are in here. I, I think it's a great fragrance. It is good. It's a, it's a good leather. Um, for me, it's a bit, it's a bit linear. I'd say. Um, I think it's it's linear, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a more simple leather, not animalic whatsoever, a bit ambery and gourmand leaning a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I think if you're going for, if you're trying to get into leather fragrances, which can definitely be daunting at times because yeah. there are some animalic leathers out there and there's leathers with a lot of stuff going on. And this one, although there are a lot of notes, I think the the mixing is really well and it kind of blends together. In a way that, again, I say this a lot, but nothing really takes center stage except for the leather, really. And I think it's I think it's a good leather. I don't have it ranked too high. I'll hint at that, but... I'm going to hint at that, too. Yeah. I, I, I enjoy this leather, but I think some of the other ones are better. Yeah. For what it is, though, I think it's a good fragrance. Yeah. Yeah. Really good blending. It's definitely not my least favorite. Oh, no. We'll definitely get to, not. <laughs> we'll get to that in a little bit, but this might be in the middle. Yeah, I agree. And sadly, speaking of our least favorite, at least this is my least favorite, it's Osmanto Shock. It's mine too. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I am not the biggest fan of Osmanthus. It's a it's a love it or hate it kind of. Sometimes I do enjoy it when they're going into the stone fruity direction because you can bring out stone fruit essence from Osmanthus. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can bring out this really kind of not very pleasant leather out of uh, Osmanthus. When it's yeah. that, I don't care for it. This one kind of falls flat for me, but it has notes of white peach, Osmanthus absolute, vanilla, woods, tonka, ambrette seeds, kananga, jasmine, white rose, cardamom, patchouli, yellow mandarin, pink pepper, sweet orange, bergamot. Boom, boom. It's very citrusy, and I think this is also very fresh, but it just doesn't go anywhere for me. I, I think it's a boring fragrance. Uh, I don't know. No, I agree. First time I smelled this one, I was, uh, I wasn't, taken aback i get i actually oddly enough i get like almost it's probably from the osmanthus also there's a jasmine white rose but i get a bit of a jasmine experience with it but i think you can bring out jasmine touches from osmanthus not, that's why they usually add jasmine jasmine white rose yeah it's just it's not really it, nothing's really speaking to me and it's not really telling me to wear it um yeah I, I enjoy i like like sebastian was saying sorry not to interrupt but like i enjoy osmanthus in the stone fruit direction I think it's great when it's used in that facet, but for this, it's just not really going there for me. Yeah, this one also has a soapy effect, and I think we're getting that from the overdose of cardamom that's in here. Mm -hmm. Something comes off like laundry soap. Yeah, I get that. And in kind of a fruity direction. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know. This one doesn't go anywhere for me, but it might have fans. Yeah, I'm de It definitely would have fans. It's, uh, it's not divisive, and I'm a bit shocked by it. <laughs> hence the name osmanto shock <laughs> but yeah it's it's really it's not telling me to wear it and yeah. i like i love it when fragrances tell me to wear them yeah it's not it's not calling me no Don't, it's not saying sebastian no it's not saying joe either <laughs> next so. up we've got queen of the sea this one right here so this one i was testing it out and i noticed that in the dry down when the marine parts disappear it smells fantastic but during the parts when the marine notes are pretty prominent, I don't really like it as much. And you know me with marine notes, and mm. I think Joe is not a fan of marine notes either. I, I don't take too much of a liking towards anything too aquatic or marine. Yeah. Aquatic, uh, marine. Marine, yeah. Yeah, not, yeah. yeah. But this one has notes of marine accord, Turkish and Moroccan rose, sweet lemons, pink grapefruit, geranium, magnolia, musk, neroli, pelagronium, precious woods, patchouli, and amber. So pelagronium is uh, sort of like geranium. It's a, they're different flowers. They look a little different, but I believe they come from the same family. They're very aromatic and uh, quite herbal smelling, I believe. But yeah, I mean, this one sprays nice. Mm -hmm. Then the marine notes appears, which is not my favorite part. And then it dries down really nice. So there's something about it that's love it and hate it kind of because of the marine notes just yeah. bothers my nose. Yeah, I I really like it off the opening. The opening is really great. Yeah, the and opening is really great, actually. The first time I smelled this, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a marine fragrance that I actually really enjoy. And I kind of had like a little freak out moment because I don't <laughs> usually take I, do I don't usually take a liking. Same with Sebastian towards marine notes. Yeah. And um. Yeah, I think uh, once that lemon, like the sweet lemon and the pink grapefruit, it's not too zesty. It's not too uh, rindy. There is a bit of a sweet citrusiness, which is nice. But then it does dissipate as citrus molecules do. It dissipates pretty early on. And then 
more that marine comes out <laughs> yeah the thing about the thing about this one also mentioning geranium and pelagronium it's very geranium forward to me i haven't put my nose on pelagronium much but according to what i've done my research on they're kind of similar to geranium so smell wise it's got a very aromatic and herbal touch in against the rose and remember in frederick Mall's rose and queer they were using geranium in that fragrance to create the rosiness so i think whatever the geranium and the pelagronium do to the rose that's in here, it kind of tones down the jamminess. It's more herbal. Mm -hmm. It's like an herbal rose, green stemmy rose versus a really bright, juicy, jammy rose. In yeah, this. not much of the leaves. Definitely more stem. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for an aquatic... You mean, you mean I, the petals? Yeah, petals, pardon me. <laughs> for the... I mean, again, though, for a, for a marine fragrance... Uh, it's it's nice. I, I do like it for a marine fragrance, for sure. And if you are a fan of marine fragrances, then this is probably going to be a love for you. Because if I take a liking to it, or Sebastian takes a bit of a liking to it, then if you like it already, then you, you'll, you'll probably love it. <laughs> yeah. All right, up next, we've got Rosa Limon. This one right here. So Rosa Limon, uh, it's a bit boring for me, but I think it has a place. It's sweet lemons, marine accents, bergamot, pink grapefruit, mandarin, geranium, damask rose, patchouli, iris, sandalwood, jasmine, ylang ylang, ambrette, agarwood, and amber. What do you think about this? They mentioned sweet lemons again, and I do get a bit of a sweetness from it. However, it's not tart and zingy, right? No, and I don't think a lot of their a lot of the citruses that they use don't seem to go in that direction. No, which, they don't. They're which sweeter. Is, it's a bit different, yeah. Which I I kind of like because I'm used to smelling a lot of of the rind of citrus, which I also do really, really enjoy. Love. But uh, switching it up every now and then isn't a bad thing. But this one, it's. It's okay. I think maybe trying it out in the summertime might change my mind because I think this will come alive in the heat and warm up. Yeah. But for me, right now, it's a bit boring. Yeah, I don't necessarily get, um, if you could imagine, like, Lyric from Amouage with that lime and then the the rose in that. Oh, no, nothing like that. I don't get that, but I think if Lyric were to go in a less soapy direction, if they tone the soapiness down, you might be able to get something similar from but, this one but don't you get like the the rose in lyric is so juicy and intense it's very juicy this but is hardly I get, rose for me i agree i get more citrus in this one but um i think if uh i don't know i feel like if they turn down the citrus a little bit in lyric man from what from Amouage, i love lyric man i think it's a really great rose fragrance it's like a really good like bathtub like bath bubbles rosy lime fragrance to me it's, yeah. it smells like rose popsicles i haven't tried those frozen rose popsicles well i don't even know if they exist i mean it sounds delicious it smells <laughs> like rose popsicles <laughs> we could we could make it we could get some rose water and make it but anyway yeah rosa limon uh fell a little short yeah in my opinion unfortunately yeah and last but not least this is the 10th fragrance it's talco this one right here basically probably get the idea of what it is I get talcum powder from this, mm -hmm. but it's got talc accord, musk, iris, vanilla, tonka beans, precious woods, amber, damask, and Moroccan rose, ylang ylang, rosewood, bergamot, jasmine. Man, this is powdery. Really, really powdery. Super powdery. Powder bomb. But rosy, too. Yeah. Very rosy. And also smells a bit like makeup. Mm -hmm. It does remind me a little bit of Taint de Neige by, oh God, what's the name of the brand? Villarezzi. Lorenzo Villarezzi. But I think this is a little rosier. But I think it's a really great fragrance. This was a this was a lot. I won't say a love off first sniff, but this was a like off first sniff. I really did like this one off of my first experience with this fragrance, and I don't typically go for the baby powder style fragrances, but this one does something for me. I really do like it, and it's it's very very talcum. Like that's what you're getting up front. The rose does come out. There is a bit of that, not too jammy, but there's a rose there. There's a bit of like a, a red feeling from that rose. Um, as I mentioned from the Latte di Cherry kind of adding to the redness. This one doesn't have a red theme, but I get a bit of a red vibe from the rose. But... I get a pink vibe because of the, the rose that's in here. Okay. Because I'm associating talcum with white, white powder. Yeah. So when you're throwing in that rose, the damask and the Moroccan rose. It takes away from some of the red. It, yeah, it kind of gives you a bit of a pinkish vibe. I like that. <laughs> I, and I, I see what you mean. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes we can smell color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I think you can. But I, I, I really do enjoy talco. I think talco is a very, very good 
powdery fragrance, which I agree it does go in a bit of a makeup y direction. But and then also go going back to the whole layering thing, I think this house is like I don't know if they are made to be layered. I think from just even dealing with the perfumes, I'm thinking, okay, I can do this one with that one and mm -hmm. so on. Like, for example, talco and erotica minimal. Yeah. You can also do it with the caramello vanilla. You can do it with the new leather. So there's um, so many options with this house for layering, I think. I agree. Yeah. It's a great layering house, even though I don't believe they're made I with don't, that intention. Yeah, no. We discovered it accidentally with uh, the caramello vanilla and the musk complexity so crazy this is weird yeah so trippy <laughs> all right uh we are going to rank the fragrances we're not going to dive deep into them we're just going to give you our quick uh countdown a little rank down rank R down rank down countdown rank down. yeah <laughs> so at number 10 for me it's osmanto shock same <laughs> i thought it was kind of boring yeah i i agree with that number nine for me is queen of the sea I didn't agree with that one. My number nine is going to be Rosa Limon. Uh, again, just fell a little short. Yeah. yeah. Uh, number eight for me is Rosa Limon. Okay. It's boring. Yeah, we're pretty close. <laughs> number eight for me was uh, Cocktail Maracuja. 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 Pardon me. Uh, yeah. Again, not really the biggest fruit fragrance guy, but... I think it's a fun, fun and playful fragrance. But for me, number seven is New Leather. And that is my number seven as well. Okay. Yeah. We're kind of agreeing here. I know. <laughs> you know, I think I could move new leather around a little bit, but uh, I kind of got addicted to cocktail maracuja, so I left it there. <laughs> so what's your number seven leather, new leather? New leather, yeah. And then my number six is Latte de Cherry. Okay. Uh, that's my number five, but my number six is Erotica Minimal. Uh, that one just wasn't really what I was expecting from the packaging, the branding, and whatnot. I think it's a great fragrance. And again, kind of like his new leather, I think it could move around a bit, but yeah. So my number five is Cocktail Maracuja. And my number five is Latte di Cherry. <laughs> <laughs> you can play around with these fragrances, yeah, but this, really is, can. this is what I'm feeling. And mm. my number four is Talco. Okay, my number four is Queen of the Sea, so I have mine ranked up a bit yeah, more. Yeah, I don't agree with that, Queen of the Sea, <laughs> and you shouldn't either. <laughs> I know. According to what I like, according to what my nose likes, I shouldn't like it, but... For whatever reason, that marine fragrance, it does work for it me. It calls you. It calls me a bit. I'm being, Joe, I'm Joe. being called by the queen of the sea. Yeah, the queen of the sea is calling you. Okay. Siren. <laughs> so what number are we? Uh, we're at number three. Three. So my number three is Erotica Minimal. Ooh. I did enjoy this one. Okay. I did enjoy it. Yeah. And I like the fact that there's options to layer with it as well. Yeah, I, I agree. And again, it can move around for me. But my number three is uh, Carmelo Vanilla and... Usually I love my vanillas and I have them super high, so hence I have it in the top three, but really great. Okay, well, my number two is Caramello Vanilla. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And my number two is going to be Talco. So we're going to have that Talcum Baby Powder fragrance at number two. Not usually something I grab, but really, It's really, interesting. Really do like it. Yeah. yeah. And my number one is Musk Complexity. And that's my number one as well. Woohoo! Look at that. <laughs> you, I, I'm telling you folks, you have to layer Carmelo Vanilla and Musk, Musk Complexity. Like, you will you will trip out. It's, it's really good. It is so, Musk so Grab good. Musk your but much more concentrated. Yeah, seriously. If Imagine if Frederick Mall just released an X-ray the Parfum of Musk Grab That's what you have with those two fragrances together. Yeah, it's really good. And you'd probably be paying the same price. Yeah, for, Probably. If not if not cheaper. <laughs> if, if you use the 20% off discount code over at So Avant Garde. There you go. Which is in the info box. These are selling at So Avant Garde. Uh, and they are distributed by the folks at the Fragrance Group who distributes Tiziana Terenzi and uh, Nishane and so several other brands. Yeah. But either, either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Do let us know if you've already sampled these fragrances. I have the strange feeling that Caramello Vanilla is very, very popular, mm -hmm. and there are fans of it out there. If you have sampled it, let us know what you think about it, because I think it's really delicious. Oh, yeah. I'm still favoring Musk Complexity, although my number two is Caramello Vanilla, so those two, uh, and uh, of course, Erotica Minimal and Talco are top four for yeah. me. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, like I said, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Thank you, guys. Bye.